Well, you can see I've opened everything up so I can really work on this engine now. And this is a continuation of my series on these early mechanical fuel-injected Mercedes gasoline engines that you see here. This is the M130 engine. This is in a 280SL. If you've watched my, any of my other videos on Happier here, you know that I'm very happy that I have this car, okay? But I need to be more happy. And the only way I'm going to get happier is to get this fuel injection system running properly. You know, I've said it, it's running rich, and I would say everyone out there probably runs rich. And I'm going to talk to you about a couple things that are kind of outside the fuel injection system, but they, pay, they play a huge key role. And in this video, I want to talk about the thermostat. Now, the thermostat, the engine thermostat, is located right here under this housing. And I'm sure some of you not really familiar with engines are saying, well, why is that so critical? Well, there's a couple things. Number one, if your engine is not up to full operating temperature, around 180 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, then the fuel-air mixture is not going to get a complete burn. It just won't be efficient enough. The heat inside the engine won't be efficient enough to thoroughly burn the fuel. And guess what? Yes, rich, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> rich mixture black tailpipe like you saw er earlier in this video series. So it's very important that you get this engine up to full operating temperature. The other reason, so that's one. The other reason, number two, is some of the key components on the fuel injection pump rely on indicators from the coolant temperature. You follow me? And if the coolant temperature doesn't get hot enough, those particular mechanisms will not work properly, thus leading you to more black stuff coming out of the tailpipe. So right away, I'm not going to just dive in. Most people just dive into the fuel injection system. You know, hey, if it's a fuel injection problem, Let's just fix the fuel injection system. No, you have to think about other things related to it that can affect its performance. And there's another key one I'm going to talk about in the next video, but right now we're just going to focus on the thermostat. This engine, which of course had been sitting four years, when I got it running, it wasn't getting over 130 degrees. So if, you're, if your engine temperature is taking a really long time, 15, 20 minutes to come up to full operating temperature, or it won't get up to operating temperature, the first thing you want to consider is this thermostat. They're old, they fail, and they won't close down properly, thus allowing too much coolant to pass through the engine. So I'm going to open this up. This one isn't particularly easy to get to, but uh, you'll get an idea of what I've had to do here and in preparation for removing the housing and getting to this old thermostat. Well, here you get a closer look at the housing. The thermostat fits right between these two halves. There's four bolts that hold this top cover on that has a neck on it for the radiator hose. Now, they didn't make it too easy on this engine to get to these two bolts here. See, the, the fuel injector lines are right, right over the top of those two bolts. So right away, I said, I need easier access to them. So I went ahead and unhooked all my fuel injector lines. Um, all six of them up here, and then I loose them on the pump. I'm using this special wrench, which is about the only wrench you can use to really get down in here. So, you know, if you have one of these old um, mechanical fuel injection cylinders, I highly recommend you get this wrench. We do carry this on, on my website if you, can't, if you can't find it locally. But I, once that's loose, I can lift the lines up. See that? Now I can, I can get, I'm going to go ahead and pull this. Oh man, this is typical corrosion. Even I'm gonna leave that. There it comes. Look at the corrosion on that. So I'm gonna have to deal with that uh, sensor plug there. Now I use, I prefer to use a PB blaster. That's one of my favorites. I've already soaked this earlier, but I'm gonna soak it up one more time. And this is where you have to be real careful you don't break these bolts. Remember, these are steel bolts going into an aluminum housing, so you have a problem down in here with dissimilar metal corrosion. I don't know how many people have broken these bolts off trying to get to the thermostat, but you have to be really careful. I have another video on how to work out rusty bolts that I showed you in my uh, video on the radiator, but I'm going to use the same technique here. I'm going to be very careful not using excessive torque. I'm going to back them out until they start to get hard. And then I'll turn them in. 
feels like this one's going to be okay. Yeah. And then once I back it out about an eighth of an inch, then I'll squirt the PB blaster in again. I'll let that one sit and I'll go on to the next one. Now this one I've already loosened up and it's ready to come out. Now the fun one, see? You have to lift this up and get on here with a long extension and start. Okay, that's stiff. I'm going to turn it back in. Okay, and then I turn it back out. Once I get it about an eighth of an inch out, I will give this one a little more penetrant. Now you're probably wondering why I'm being so careful here. Well, if you've ever broken off a bolt in the aluminum housing, it's almost impossible to get out. You can't get it out with an easy out. It's seized in there. You, in most cases, in some cases, you have to get a new, a new housing. And these are getting harder and harder to find used. Okay, this one's real tight. Okay, turn it. It's tightening up. Switch direction. Turn it in. I'm gonna back it out again. Back it out a little bit more. Okay, it's tightening up. Now I'm gonna turn it back in. And I'll back it up. Okay, that's tightening up a little bit more right there. Okay, now I'll, I'll spray that one because it's sitting up about a sixteenth of an inch. I'll get in real close so I get the, the PV blaster down, wicking down into the threads. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to number the first one I worked on. Look. If it comes out this easy, don't use a lot of torque. Now when I pull this out, you're going to get to see some of the corrosion on the threads. See that? Look at the corrosion. Now you can imagine if that were dry in there, it would just rip the aluminum threads out. So if you don't break the bolt off, you'll rip the aluminum threads out and you'll have to tap it out and go oversize. So either way, this is the best way to avoid the frustration and additional work here. Okay, let's check that one. That one's pretty clean. Okay, now we'll get into this one. Look at how easy they come out. Once you get them lifted up and can get the penetrant down into the threads, what a difference that makes. Okay, I got all four bolts out. And right away you're going to find out that this housing <laughs> isn't, isn't going to come off and you're going to be thinking, wow, is it, did I miss a bolt here? But most of the time these get stuck on. I, I highly recommend a soft face hammer. Don't use a hard face hammer. First thing you do is just wrap on the top. That'll kind of shock loose the gasket. Wrap on the top a few times, then come under the neck. <clears throat> there we go. That freed up that housing. And you probably have the same, same problem with these old thermostats. They don't want to come out. You, you've got to get a tool in there. You know, this is going to damage it, but yeah, I'm going to replace it anyway. So I can bring a tool in here and just pry up on it like this, and usually it'll pop right out. Okay, the housing's out. Thermostat is out. I'm looking down in here. We'll talk uh, just briefly about it. Uh, inspection you know there's no corrosion down in here the lip looks good here this lip looks real good it's not corroded i have some corrosion here that i'm gonna have to look closely at hopefully that's not going to be too too badly pitted i'll be able to clean that up and not have to worry about any repair on this the other thing i recommend is always replacing the short hose when you're changing the thermostat Re that's going to require removing the housing from the head, but this short hose and this radiator hose have been recently re replaced. I can we even see the the part sticker there. <laughs> so this these hoses I'm not I'm not going to replace at this time. I'll take this over the bench, see if I can clean this up, and then we'll come back and take a take a close look at it and talk about putting the new thermostat back in. Look at how this cleaned up. I mean. It, it was a mess. Uh, let me explain what I had to do. There was a lot of corrosion around this edge. You know, I got a real sharp screwdriver and I had to, had to scrape a lot of the corrosion around there. And then this was a little bit of a problem. This, this is problematic on a lot of these old aluminum 
thermostat housings on Mercedes-Benz, they tend to get corroded. Look at the pitting. Now, if they were pitting all the way across, it may not seal on the radiator hose, but really I've got some flat surface all the way around. So that came out pretty well, and I used a special aluminum acid to kind of clean that up so it looks, you know, kind of old and original. You don't want to polish these because it doesn't look, it doesn't look original if you, if you take them to a polishing wheel. Now the thermostat, the new thermostat, is going to fit in here like this, and that should just drop in. There shouldn't be any corrosion down there, but the ceiling ring goes on top like that, and then this is, this is tightened down. And, and I'm not going to go over that in this video because you should be able to I mean, we'll get, back, get this back on if you're doing this yourself. But there is a concern I had, and that's right here. I mentioned previously that I was going to leave the short hose on here because it's obvious it had been replaced. Well, there's a couple things. One, I don't like these U.S. style hose clamps. They look pretty, pretty bad. I'm going to, you know, I'd rather see the, uh, the genuine uh, German type hose clamps on there. But my other concern is since I had corrosion on this nipple, even though this is a new hose, maybe there's corrosion in behind the hose on both this upper and lower connection. So I decided, okay, I'm, I'm going to take this off. You know, I'm trying to kid myself. I'm really trying to save work here, but uh, that's probably a false savings. So I'm going to, I'm going to load these two studs up. There's two two uh, studs right here that go into the head that hold this uh, thermostat housing to the head. And while those are soaking, I'm going to make sure those are really soaked up here where I'm using some croil oil. I, I really like this, this stuff. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to loosen up these hose clamps. I'll just get them loose say, so they drop down out of the way. Let's get this one off. It's going to be interesting to see whether or not I actually find any corrosion behind there. But, uh, okay, those are loose. Now let's go after these bolts. This uh, nut right here is so close to the housing that you can't really get a standard size socket on it. You can get a little stubby wrench in here, but you don't have much rotation. See that? And you run into the exhaust manifold over here. So what I do is I find the thinnest walled socket I can get my hands on, and then I'm going to drive it. Not too hard, but just enough so that it's, I get it onto that nut. Okay, let's feel this again. All right. I'll use the same technique that I used on that radiator. If I, if I feel this start to tighten up, I'll go ahead and run it back in a little bit. And then... We're going to run it out. All right, now it's coming. If you're just patient on these old rusty fasteners, you'll save a lot of time. Look at how dry that came off, even though I was using... I got these two nuts off, but really that's only half the challenge be amazed how stuck uh, these housings can be on on these heads you've got a gasket in here and then you've got a pretty tight fit on these two studs so you have to resort to a little hammering technique like this there it comes all right let's take a look Let's see if my hunch was right, whether or not I've got corrosion. Okay, look at that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this is a real good example. It may look good from the outside, but if this were left unattended to, this is pretty severe corrosion in here. And this short hose could start leaking. I've not, it's not quite as bad down here, so. But that one, uh, that proves the point. Here's that gasket I was telling you about. So I'm going to order up a new gasket. We're going to clean these up. And when I get this cleaned up, I've got my 
my new short hose here. I think I'll go ahead and remove this hose and this hose at the same time and do the same thing. I might as well inspect all these nipples and clean them all up. And one thing I do do, by the way, you might be thinking, well, Ken, how do you protect? Uh, when I put this back on, I take a silicone grease. Uh, you don't want to glob it on too much. You don't want it to get into the cooling system. So you just need a light film of silicone grease around here before you put the hose on and clamp it. And that silicone grease will retard, won't necessarily stop it, but it will retard uh, any future corrosion on the pits that you see here on this upper part of the housing. So we'll get that all cleaned up, get it back together. And uh, okay, I know my thermostat issue will be solved.